Sešli jsme se dnes, abychom si připomněli setkání Jana Patočky s Maxem van der Stuhlem, které se uskutečnilo přesně před 40 lety v tomto hotelu. Sometimes we might indulge in believing that it was the West that won the Cold War. But the actual truth is of course that the people of the East won the Cold War. People who had the audacity to believe that through human rights and dialogue we could take down the Iron Curtain. And we will always owe a huge debt of gratitude to Jan Patochka and all the other heroes. Exactly this time, 40 years ago, there were two people making recordings. Unfortunately, the recording was Erik Boshuizen. Is lost, no, nowhere to be found, but I found my recording. In 1977, here in Prague, the philosopher Jan Patochka became the unlikely spokesperson for Charter 77, a proclamation signed by a number of dissidents and issued to the communist authorities that pointed out the flagrant disregard of the norms of freedom and legality in Czechoslovakian society. As a philosopher who had studied the writings of Patochka, I came to Prague 40 years after the historical Charter 77 proclamation in search of the person, Jan Patochka. Why did a philosopher, whose life was dedicated to reading, writing and teaching, decide so late in his life to engage himself in the world? What is the significance of this engagement? Who was Jan Patochka? I think it's a great pity that Patochka did not live up to the great successes of Europe in the 80s and 90s. He shown how the thought is uh, is invented in in the in brain. Yes. Das Thema Europa war für ihn also in den 70er Jahren wirklich sehr sehr zentral. Well, that sounds as a cliche, but it, it looks like it happened yesterday, of course. Yeah. As a philosopher of word and deed. My search for Jan Patochka was not just about a past, but about a present. It is a present entrusted to caretakers of memory, who continue to speak long after the words and deeds have been spoken. Now, shall we go and have a coffee? You had met Patochka when you were a young student, and I was wondering if you could talk a bit about your experience with him as a teacher, who he was as a teacher. Well, his way of teaching by now would be considered outdated. I could call it inspired meditation, this enormous concentration on the philosophical idea. And uh, for us uh, in the 60s, it was an important message, uh, this autonomy of subjectivity, symbol of uh, individuality, mm -hmm. which was waking up all over the world, but specifically in Czechoslovakia. And people want to elevate Patochka, make him into an academic figure. This, this way in which he's been easily, by some, made into a kind of myth. We have failed something. It seems to me that the majority of his interpreters uh, has tried to transform him in an academically recognized philosopher. His texts are on the dusty shelf of university library with inscription, phenomenology. Mm -hmm. We must emancipate this, this myth from the banality which uh, surrounds it. Public life is essential for philosophy. The possibility of a public life for philosophy during Patochka's lifetime was far from obvious. How does one have a public life in times of uncertainty and oppression? This is the um, series of lectures which we later called uh, Plato and Europe. Originally we called it uh, Care for the Soul. 
And was it Patrushka's idea to have these home seminars recorded? Uh, no, we have all no, these no, recordings, no, no, or this was, was the students who decided to record. It was, in fact, my idea. Okay. <laughs> so we were equipped by these small tape recorders and uh, made uh, recordings mm -hmm. quite regularly because we understood from the very beginning that uh, Patochka's lecturing is something quite extraordinary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The whole uh, thing was in fact uh, quite secret and mm -hmm. we were all the time in danger that the police uh, would inter in interrupt us and uh, make uh, some troubles. One of the reasons why why Patochka became the spokesman of Charter 77 is in fact because the communist regime uh, pretends to, to have some laws, but it doesn't uh, fulfill them and uh, the Charter was making uh, something like a mirror showing the truth. Well, the trouble is that the majority of population uh, prefers uh, listening to some nice lies instead of understanding what uh, really is going on. Mm -hmm. And so we are afraid that uh, such, uh, such uh, totalitarian regimes can again uh, come into power. Especially in times of historical uncertainty, what is essential to public life is the public pursuit of truth. This was a central idea to Jan Patochka's thinking, which he identified with nothing less than the idea of Europe itself. When he über das Ende Europas spricht, dann muss man sich natürlich fragen, was am Anfang war. Und das ist bei ihm die gemeinsame Entstehung von Philosophie und Politik oder Polis. Und diese Verbindung ist in Begriff von, von Bemühen, das Leben, sowohl das theoretische als auch das praktische Leben, auf der Einsicht zu gründen. Und man muss sich als Mensch nach der vernünftigen Einsicht gestalten. Und diese Entwicklung rekonstruiert er als die, die europäische Geschichte. Und was wäre heutzutage? Das Nachtleben, die Bedeutsamkeit? Das, das von würde mich Patrick auch interessieren, was er dazu heutzutage sagen würde. Aber ich vermute, dass er die heutige äh, äh, Integration Europas eher als eine Fortsetzung, wieder äh, große Weltmacht zu werden auf, auf diesem Kampfplatz der, der Wirtschaft und der Technik und der, der Wissenschaft. Also, aber ich glaube, vielleicht auch ein bisschen gegen ihn, dass die Philosophie politischer werden sollte als, als die Politik philosophischer. Aber wie, wie es einzufädeln wäre, das, ja, das ist, die Herausforderung das, das ist der für, für die, die jüngere Generation. <lacht> Europe was something which goes by itself. It was a natural center of, of the world. And uh, Patochka was not a typical Eurocentrist. But um, I think that he understood that Europe is unique in the world. It's not so that there would be alternatives to it. For him, Europe was um, the beginning of uh, philosophy, of uh, human freedom and of history. Europe is an enormous historical success. Uh, people who lived uh, before the war would not have believed that something like this would be possible at all. I've always been fascinated by what is arguably one of the last Socratic gestures of Western philosophy. Jan Patochka's life and thinking is inseparable from the history that he witnessed. It was a history at the center of which stood the question, what is Europe? What we have to consider here today is the permanent prevention of war and the establishment of conditions of freedom and democracy 
even in the darkest hour. I will not lose faith now. The destiny of Europe was above all a question of conflict between ideologies, cultures, and philosophies. The United States has nothing to fear from peaceful competition. We welcome it, and we will win it. The modernity is the problem. The contradictions of modernity, the capitalism and uh, the communism are two ways to the modernity and uh, both are defective, um, dangerously defective. It was clear for Patochka that truth is not nothing which you just uh, find uh, on the street, but uh, something which you have to look for and to, uh, to well, cultivate, to, mm -hmm. to uh, develop. This pursuit of truth this commitment to a life in truth, which constituted the veritable meaning of public engagement, motivated Jan Patochka 40 years ago to become the spokesperson for Charter 77, whatever the costs. It was a meeting between the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Patochka, so we were just witnesses of it. We were not participating as journalists in it, only see, listening. Yeah, yeah. This is the beginning, okay. And the few words he was starting, we felt the, 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 the historical moment of it, and we were very moved by it. It was very, very emotional. Patochka was ill right? yeah, when, when he went to the interview, this yeah, meeting. He was ill, but we didn't know that. I didn't know that. Nobody knew that he was ill. Apparently he had a heart condition. And uh, with the meeting, he was talking a little bit hesitating, but it was more because he was speaking a foreign language than that it was something that was connected to his health. But you hear his breathing is a bit... Yeah, but it could bad. also be emotion. Yeah. So it was absolutely unclear. The terrible thing was that he was later on interrogated by the STB, mm -hmm. sometimes 11 hours mm -hmm. a day, mm -hmm. non-stop. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, he died. Mm -hmm. When we came home from uh, Prague, and we, we learned about the death of Patochka. They asked uh, me, is it, uh, okay, you organized that? Mm. And now he's dead? Is that what you wanted? Mm. First, we didn't know he had a heart condition. Secondly, I was absolutely sure that he was extremely happy to have mm. had that meeting. Mm -hmm. So we, he did not regret it at all. And three, the STB knew he had a heart condition. Mm. And nevertheless, they interrogated mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. So the people who are responsible for his death is not Max von der Stuhl, mm -hmm. not me, Dick Verkijk. Mm -hmm. That's the SDB, mm -hmm. the, the Secret Service. Mm -hmm. They are responsible for his sudden death. Mm -hmm. The life of a philosopher is not without an afterlife. If there still is a legacy to Jan Patochka's life and thinking today, it consists above all in a responsibility to questions that are crucial because they remain as unsettling as they are unsettled. Whom would be that against which we're dissident? And who are we speaking to as a dissident? Even if it's possible being a dissident, it doesn't matter. But if conflict matters, if disagreement matters as a creative space of, uh, of searching for values or whatever, then dissidency matters. You don't have to basically be this like closed indiv groups of individuals who struggle against uh, power, but you can say everything quite openly through Facebook or through other social media. Isn't there a, differ a difference between uh, one person who risks uh, his life uh, just uh, struggling against the political power, a dictatorship, a totalitarianism, and a person who just complains for 10 <laughs> minutes posting something on Facebook? What you are kind of all saying is that there can be solidarity only if there is something like that we had to fight against together. 
You could say that the narrative of Europe culminating in 89 was against something. Totalitarianism, fascism. And now that that has been won, so to speak, there's nothing left. So I guess the question would be, is there still a Europe? Wir werden nie von, äh, vom Wege des Gesetzes abweichen. Wir werden nie äh, irgendwas machen, was äh, gegen die tschechoslowakischen Gesetze verstößt. Und äh, äh, wir, äh, es, ist, äh, es ist unser... unser Uh, alle bemühen, uh, 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 gerade zur Legalität und zur, und zur Wahrung, zur, zur restlosen Wahrung desjenigen, was nicht nur uh, unterzeichnete, sondern veröffentlichte und, uh, uh, und bestätigte, Ähm, tschechoslowakische Gesetze sind.